Welcome back to our second session of Building Biblical Community. Steve and I are back again, excited about this one because this one's about being a learning community and we know how important that is in the life of God's people and about the Bible and about what we do together when we're trying to engage with some truth. Now, last time when we talked, we talked about celebration yeah. and making sure we had a sense of fun. Steve loves fun. Love he the is, fun side, brother. He is the fun guy, but it was also right about a sense of joy and a deep-seated uh, relationship with God and with others in a way that makes us feel solid and at home and good about what God's doing in our lives. Well, part of what we need to do now is say, but what does God say and who is he and how do we learn about him and what's going on in his world and with others? Uh, one of the important passages about learning, about truth, about God's word is Psalm 119. It's a great passage about God's truth and the writer uses God's commands, God's precepts, uh, God's principles, different kinds of things to describe his word. And it says this in Psalm 119, that God's word is a lamp to our feet and it's a light to our path. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we want to be a learning community is to have that, that light, that guidance that we need. And I think one of the greatest learners, at least in one of the Bible stories, is the prodigal son. You mentioned the prodigal. Yeah. Or last the, time. Did you call him the runaway? Yep. Our last session, the runaway son. And it was about a person who took all the goods from his father and his inheritance and ran and spent it all and, and wound up in a pigsty. Many of you know the story, very popular. But this phrase comes out in the Bible, it says this, and then he came to his senses. And I would translate that in a way of saying he, he had a learning moment. There are things he knew before that. He knew truth, but all of a sudden now mm -hmm. he's a learner and reality has hit and something happens. He changes and his behavior changes and his attitude changes. And the way you know learning has taken place is we see that. You see something happen. There is a change in the person. They exactly. have made a, a behavioral switch. So we want to talk about what that kind of learning community looks mm -hmm. like, but we also kind of want to talk about at first what it's not. And there's things that a learning community is not. Yeah, let's, let's pound through some things that a learning community is not. First thing is, it's not a teaching community. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many things that we, we try to look around and look towards, but it is clear it is not a teaching community. When you look at Matthew chapter 7, there Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount. It is one of the, the most pristine, preached about, talked about sermons all throughout the New Testament. And people say it's the greatest teaching of all time. Uh, of course. And Jesus is, you know, giving this, and he's the best teacher. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Son, son of God, <laughs> got something going for you. Now, now, now look at this. He's giving this, this talk on the wise man, and he concludes it by saying, but if you don't put this into practice, you have Jesus teaching away, and yeah. so we find out if you don't put it into practice. Another thing a learning community is not, it is not a talking community. I love to talk. You're, you, you're you, killing me, man. Dude, I, I've been noticing. I've been like sitting here like, going, you know, what should I do right here? <laughs> but, you know, you kind of get the picture on some of these news shows when, yeah. uh, you, when you have four or five people and they're talking over it's themselves and out. it's chaotic and you're just like listening to this and it's just noise, 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 noise. And again, Scripture talks about that. In 1 Timothy, it was talking just about you know, there can be so much meaningless talk. Yeah. You know, although the people were, were taught the word of God and Paul was able to spread the gospel, yeah. and, but you found out that his coming back is saying there was meaningless talk. Yeah, that 1 Timothy 1, 5 to 7 passage, it, well, it meaningless. I think the old King James said vain janglings. It means like wanderings. People just talk for the sake of what talk. What was that word again? It's a vain jangling. Vain jangling. Ask someone if they've had a vain jangling <laughs> lately. <laughs> Mess you're being biblical, it. but it's so exactly. kind of funky. So, uh, yeah, but you're right. We, we can have this happen, though, in groups and in other sort of around the coffee table Christian discussions about the Bible where people will just talk and talk and talk about what they think, what they think it says. The question is, any learning happening here? Any behavioral change exactly. happening from that. And a third thing is it's not. It's not a study community. Uh, study is important, but it's not a study community. That's not the ultimate design of a learning community. For example, Jesus, in confronting the religious leaders of his day, in John chapter 5, verse mm -hmm. 39, says, you know, you study the word of God because you think that by that you have eternal life, but you fail to come to me and have life. This idea is they were experts in study, best studiers around, but they weren't necessarily learners simply because they were studying. Now, before you throw us out of the group, they kind of want to throw us out of the group now because you uh, said it's not about teaching. 
It's not about what else. It's not talking. It's not talking. It's not about study. So we're like, What's okay, it about? What is it about? But we wanted to hit that and say those things are good, right? Yes. I mean, wholeheartedly, we, we believe in all three of those elements being very present. But you see many warnings right. all throughout the Word of God that when it's just that, yeah. there is a miss. It's and like we know when someone teaches, for example, you teach, I teach, you've given sermons. The only thing we know about when someone teaches or when someone gives a sermon is that something's been taught. And when mm -hmm. we think of t teaching as traditionally understood, it's someone standing up and proclaiming something. And sometimes people will say, you know, we taught you know, 100 people today or we taught 5,000 people today. But Jesus would probably ask us, and how many of them learned? And you go, oh, that's another part. Well, and how many studies do we get to where they say within 72 hours, you forget 95% of exactly. what you've heard. And it's just reiterating this very point we're trying to help you guys capture. Yeah, so our heart in this, and we're hitting this a little bit, is we want you to become a learning community that, that gets this truth and then says, okay, how do we live now? What do we do with this? How do we process this together? So to get you started on this process, we want to talk about your learning style. Now, your guide will help you with this in a moment. We're going to turn you to a discussion around that. But we have learning styles. People learn differently. And that's why sometimes when simply we teach or talk, some are learning, some are not. Yeah. And, we, and we can't guarantee that because each of us maybe has one or more learning styles. So here's what we'd like you to do. Turn mm. to your guide. And look, you'll see four learning styles there. And it'll ask you to look which one describes you. Share that with your group and learn a little bit about how people in your little community learn. And we'll be back in a few minutes.